Well, guys, um, April is already here, which means the first quarter of 2023 is over, which means there'll be a ton of companies that caught our eye. And these are our first three. We do not own any shares in the three companies mentioned. And of course, as usual, guys, none of what we say is financial advice. Please speak up to a professional if you need that sort of advice. And some of y'all don't even actually read the disclaimer or don't even understand. So if you don't understand, please just ask us what do all of this mean? Hey guys, if you're interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing, head over to the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass so that we share with you exactly how we do it. Now, guys, uh, uh, you know, we say so many times, mm. not a buy to sell recommendation, right? It's just our analysis on these companies that, you know, very interesting. Uh, as usual, we are looking at, you know, kind of what the management is doing. Don't expect like a super deep, uh, research because uh, if you were to do that, the video would be hours long. Mm. But yeah, basically, um, you can look at what's happening to these companies. And the three companies are, hey, our favorite top glove is back, uh, KSM, which is one of the stocks that I own very early on in my investing career, and Air Asia X. So we start with top glove. So top glove, uh, well, it's up 30, nearly 31%. And it's also a company that we talked a little bit about quite recently, right? Yes. In the Firo Pro portfolio. But I think some of you are well, all right? Top Glove is just not a good investment over the past year or so, maybe even two years. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's been a lot of pain. I know some people are still diamond handing it. Exactly. Um, but it's still selling a half billion market cap, right? So mm. that's very interesting. So what's interesting is that the past two days, it actually start to bounce back. Yes. Like it shows signs of uh, recovery, uh, although they reported bad numbers. And yeah, if you are a FirePro member, I think you will know about this news. Uh, basically, this is the trade that uh, I have made. And I also share it to the group. So if you want to know more about this uh, short-term catalyst, I mentioned this a lot in the Telegram stock portfolio. So this is one of them. And yeah, basically just to share the results of our Telegram portfolio. And yeah, let's go to the results of top yes. list. So uh, nothing much to actually comment on because they are still loss making. I mean, the sentiment is still very bad for the glove industry. So this like there's no positive news. Uh, but then the market... Uh, trade it as it, it is going to recover. Yes, so, and we'll talk a little bit about why they think that way later. Yes, all right. So uh, again, if you look at the uh, quarter on quarter on quarters uh, report, right? So this is the, I believe the quarter two, quarter one, quarter uh, then quarter three, quarter four. Uh, basically, if you notice, right, the sales has been declining. So it means there's still no sign of any recovery. However, if you notice that the, losses are increasing, but then there's a slight drop in losses over here. So, which means that uh, they are managing costs a little bit better than uh, the preceding, uh, preceding quarters. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, actually it's just nothing much. It's yeah, just that they it's like a two and a half million <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, reduction actually, it's, in yeah, losses. It's better than nothing else. It's actually worse off if actually they are even more worse. Yeah. Okay, so this is what happened actually when uh, the share price actually went up 30%. So in the commentary of this uh, management, right, they said that the customer's glove inventory level is moving closer to normality. But I believe this is not only the only trigger. The other trigger was that um, they say the industry's average selling price has started to revise uh, the selling price upwards from February 2023. So that's actually a good sign for the glove makers because they have been reducing their selling price because of uh, obviously there's a huge amount of supply in the market and they cannot really push price. And also customers are not really stockpiling their product. So when you see signs of average selling price recovery, right, that's usually a very positive sign uh, for the industry as a whole. And especially because this is not only one com company that is uh, revising the price, it's like almost every single company, even China Ingo also mm. is uh, revising. And then another interesting thing, interesting thing is that their raw material prices were also lower a little bit. 
So it's like easing about 16%. And then the average nitrile latex is also eased about 25%. Interesting. So material cost is dropping. Selling price is increasing a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. So, mm. However, uh, if let's say you didn't manage to capitalize on this uh, opportunity, uh, I mean, I don't blame you. The reason why also is because if you look at these banks, right, investment banks, they all has been pointing out that there's still no signs of recovery. Lah. They are still very bearish on the company. So even though you missed this opportunity, right, I think uh, it is okay. But if you are, if you actually learn more about the glove industry, I think any signs of positivity uh, in that particular industry I will actually boost up uh, any company yeah. share price because it is uh, the level of pessimism inside that industry is too high already, uh, which means any good news will create uh, like an up, uproar or uptrend in the share yeah, price. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's very interesting when it comes to psychology because even like you, you see what they reported, right? There's mm. a slight increase in price and some decrease in the price and these small changes alone really can change the the psychology of the market right yeah, yeah exactly. but in the past right we were used to you know market the top glove and all that growing by you know 15 20 30 percent but then i mean in terms of the fi the financials but mm. people are like normal right we're used to it so it just goes to show right it's always the reaction to the the most recent experience yep that is the thing that matters yeah. the most. I think people, because they are quite, um, they have pain already in the past. So they are scars already. And then uh, there's a lot of better scars. There's so, a ray of hope. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I believe like those investors who don't buy, right? They are like scared that, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, they are yeah. scared to like buy this stock. So yeah, it is a good opportunity if to buy from the pessimistic. Uh. Yeah, so this is the last takeaway. Uh, thanks to Stockbeat and uh, I believe Darren's uh, notes on Top Glove uh, recent investor briefing. So they share that the average selling price has actually increased from uh, $17 per 1,000 pieces to 21. That's actually a very uh, healthy sign. And also the uh, order below cost, they will actually reject. So last time they would be desperate for sales. So they are willing to sell it at a lower price. But yes. right now, because they cannot really cover the cost, I mean, uh, they also need to find ways to uh, ease out their supplier. So the only way it is to actually not get, uh, not to sell the price at the buyer's market. So they're trying to like bump up the price bit by bit every single uh, month or every single quarter. Uh, however, a bad sign is that their utilization rate is still very low. Mm -hmm. It's about 30 to 35%. So pre-pandemics, uh, uh, utilization rate is around like 70% to even 80%. Yeah, so yeah. we are still far from it, but it is still a good sign uh, that at least there is some recovery in selling price. And yeah, the last point is basically that uh, probably this industry has finally found its bottom. And that's also the reason why the share price uh, rebounded back like 30%. Yeah, and, and however, on the grapevine, right, the rumors are that, you know, Chinese companies might be coming here. Mm. to set up shop. Yeah. So it's not, you know, investing is not like straightforward all yeah. the time, right? It's like their signs are good, signs that are bad. You just have to decide which one is like more effective yes. than the other. Yes. Uh, now, uh, the question is that maybe you will be asking, uh, so now it's 990 cent, right? Can I like get into it? Um, well, it your margin of safety has like uh, reduced by a lot already yes. because it's went up 30% already. So, uh, which means right now you actually need to see whether their next quarter report actually announced a uh, improvement in numbers. Yes. So that's the key thing that you need to know. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll not financial advice, but I'll just say just stay on the sideline uh, yeah. yeah, for now lah. Uh, yeah. But right, guys, before we move on, if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance. We do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the Mentorship Program. If you're interested, you can apply it in the comment section or the description. All right. So the second company. All right. KSM. So they are into automotive testing. Mm. Um, and it's a company that I looked at in 2017. Mm. Did really well. Didn't do so well. Did quite well again. Then now not doing so well. Yeah. 
300, I think the peak, it was somewhere close to uh, $20. $1 billion. About, yeah. About $1 billion market cap. So they actually built some of these um, burning testing machines to essentially test uh, car components. Yeah. Um, and they claim to be the largest uh, in the world. Uh, so actually, I we, we did clarify this thing with the owners and also some of the experts. They are the largest independent ah, burn-in testing. Right. So the truth is a lot of companies will have their own internal burn-in testing and mm. usually they are much bigger than KSM. Right. Uh, but KSM exists because of the need for independence. Mm. Right, because the classic example is always, you know, five, six years back, there was the Samsung explosion phone, you know, the phone that exploded. Yes, 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 yes. So the 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 process that, that prevents stuff like that from happening is the burning test. Mm. Right, so you just put in one of your components, um, can be anything, right? Mm. Uh, whether it's, what's the word? Automotive or consumer electronics, doesn't matter. But more so in consumer uh, automotive, right? Because the more heat generators, the yes, higher. Exactly. So they just put a thing there and then they heat the thing. They heat the component to see how long it lasts and things like that. So yeah, that would have been prevented. So one of the reasons why Samsung uh, had that issue was because, if I'm not mistaken, their burning testing was done in-house. Mm. So, you know, for Samsung right, business number one, right? They want to get orders out. So what are they going to do when they see like, maybe the test is showing uh, not so good. They say, ah, oh, we just close one eye, mm. right? So you get explosions. So you get someone independent, then, um, you know, at least you, you will be able to have these sort of standards. Right. So uh, the reason why actually KSM caught my eye is because uh, recently there's actually a bump in terms of their prices. Yes. Uh, actually, I think at the peak, it was around like 13% or something like that. So I thought there was some sort of good news uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. which prompted me to actually find out more. So if you look at their uh, latest quarterly earnings, uh, losses, are they're still in the loss making, but then it is uh, improvement. Uh, and in their financial 2023 is still far from being profitable. Lah, but we shall see in the next two quarter whether they are able to turn things around. So this is the uh, latest top to bottom line uh, data. So if you notice that their sales has not been doing that well at the moment, uh, they are still down 13% and the profit is still down 29%. However, the market is quite optimistic in their future. So uh, let's have a look further a bit. Now, uh, before we talk about that, I just want to share a little bit of something that is quite concerning. a little bit concerning. Yeah, which is the RPT or related party transaction. So uh, KSM has a holding company, which is called Sunrise uh, Limited. Singapore based. Yep. Yes, it is a Singapore based. I believe the CEO also have some shares in mm. uh, Sun, uh, Sunrise Limited. So basically what is these two number is, right? They have to pay a management fee and also a dividend payable to this uh, holding company, which is about 5.4 uh, million. Yeah. Now, if let's say they didn't pay that, right, actually they will be man they will be able to like save some money. Uh, they'll well. be profitable. Yeah, they'll be profitable. Because yeah. if you look at the uh, cumulative period, this is which quarter again? Uh, quarter two. Q2, right? Yeah. So let's, if you extend it, right, you're looking at 5 million of losses, mm. right? In 2023, right? Yep. But you look here, it's 5 million of profits. And then uh, if you look at the previous years, the purchase of equipment, which presumably some of them they purchased from Sunrise, right? So that's to another 2.7. So you are, if you add all of them up, 4.7 plus uh, 1.2, you're looking at six, right? Mm. Plus this one, so six, nearly nine. Mm. So nine million. But their profit last year was uh, what, 6.5 million. Yeah. So imagine like how much we go a bit. Now we're not saying that they are siphoning money out and all that. That's kind of for you to decide. But what we are saying is that, look, maybe one area that we need to really look at is how are these purchase and equipments being priced? Mm. How is the management fees being paid? Right. right. Is it fair or not? Yeah. Like? Are they paid? Or are they overpaying? Are, are they paid a salary right, from right. KSM? Right. 
So if they already paid a salary from KSM, let's say, why is it that we are paying management fees as well? Mm. Yeah, that's something for you to think about it. All right, so uh, so this actually is what caught my eye. It is that uh, despite they are being in a loss-making situation, they are still aggressively uh, pumping in money to buy more property, plant, and equipment. Yeah, so these so, are their machines. Yes, exactly. So when you start to buy, right, even though you are loss-making, I mean, right, uh, you start to wonder that maybe this company uh, has something good coming in their yes. way. Like maybe there's like more orders or maybe they are replacing some machines. Uh, before I, I do want to correct myself earlier on, I made a mistake. I said that they built the machines to test the grid. They don't do that. They are just service providers. Yes, so service they actually product. buy these machines and they actually use their abilities uh, expertise. to yeah, yeah. execute the burn-in test. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right, so this is the uh, further segment breakdown on each of these uh, acquisition of PPE, right? So the group actually mentioned that they have acquired about 45.5 million uh, of PPE. And also they have a commitment to buy up to 12.6 million as of uh, January 2023. So this is actually a very huge mark number if you compare that uh, against their profit. I mean, right now they are loss making. La. So you may be wondering why are they still aggressively buying more machines? So uh, so you also be wondering, let's say if they're not really having profit, how are they going to actually acquire machine? Yes. Is it through uh, fundraising from shareholders or is it through debt? So luckily they have like a huge amount of yeah, cash in their bank balance. They're a very cash rich company. Yes, exactly. This is half of their market cap, mm. right? And so far, they have not been raising any money from shareholders. Yes. And then they have a lot of retained earnings. So that is a sign that at least they have the ability to buy this PPE without diluting shareholder value. So that's a pretty good sign. Okay, so this is the latest press release by uh, Mr. Sam. So basically what he said that uh, the reason why he's buying all of these PPEs, right, it is to actually upgrade their machine to cater for this new chip that is required from the uh, EV vehicles. Uh, and then, so there's a reason why they have to uh, replace those. I, I believe, I'm not sure whether is it replacing or is it putting in more new machines. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually uh, the confusing part that maybe if let's say you are a shareholder, you go to AGM, maybe you can ask this question, uh, whether are they replacing the machines or are they actually adding more machines to cater to this uh, customer. But uh, anyway, the management expect that there will be a progressive volume growth in the later part of this year. So which means that I believe the CEO is quite positive that they will get more sales. Uh. Yep. Yeah. So we shall see in the next few quarter whether they can uh, perform. Okay, so this is the last takeaway. Uh, so number one concern is the related party transaction. Um, the second one, right, uh, if you notice the capital uh, expenditure for 2014, 2015, 2017, and 2021 numbers, right, uh, those are the a uh, years that they spend the most capex. So they spend about 100, at least 100 million. Yes. And funny thing is that when they spend a lot of capex, that is where their share price actually start to go up. So mm. if you notice, right, this bumpy share price over here. Yes. Yeah, so 2017, 2018, they actually bought a lot of capex and then that's where boom, stong. Yep. And then over here, 2021, that's also where they bought a lot of PPE and then stong. So right now we are at this stage and they are buying a lot of PPE. Not sure whether would that translate to a positive sign in terms of share price, but yes. yeah, my last point is basically saying, is there a recovery yeah. coming soon? Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Right. Yes. Uh, but the only thing I'll add is that I think there'll be a hit or miss when it comes to the you know them spending on the equipments because I think the shelf life of each equipment is maybe three to five years. Mm. And not all the time, you guys can actually do your own calculation, not all the time, um, when they spend, they actually get the cash flows back yes. from the thing. So that's something to to take note of. Like is, is that kind of industry, is that kind of company where they need to spend a lot of money mm. to make. Money. Sometimes a lot of money, yeah. sometimes not mm. a lot. Yeah. Right? Like they spent in 2021, look at what's happening in 2022, in 2023. Mm. Right? So. Yeah. I mean, their event, they are, Machines are easily obsolete. La. They have to Quite follow easy. the uh, Quite easy, obsolete. Yeah. So that's the risk of- And that's uh, not a business that I'm like, oh, I really need to own. Mm, right. All right, guys. Enjoying the video so far? If the answer is yes, remember, like, comment, subscribe. And as far as comments go, if you don't like the video, do let us know as well. We always take all sorts of feedback as long as they're constructive.
Okay, so the last, last company, a- airplane a- company. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, up, don't let the size <laughs> mislead you. It's up to nearly two hundred fifty percent. Yes, of course. Asia X for those who don't know is uh, linked to Asia, and they are focused on long haul flights. So, uh, at Asia or Capital A now, they are mainly focused on short haul, mm. which is um the definition is four hours, uh, flight maximum. So. Asia X obviously is like your Mars, MES, um, SIA, LA, things yeah. like that. Yep. So it's a less profitable business model for various reasons, but we won't go into it. Yes. Okay. So the latest quarters have been quite nice. I mean, they have actually yeah. reported a uh, profit, even though they are actually undergoing a PN17 status right now. Yeah, they are still like- I'm sure this helps with their PN17, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I believe there's like a news that they actually managed to negotiate with their creditors the supplying their aircraft fund. So they actually managed to eliminate a lot of the loans <laughs> that is owed to their creditor. So yeah. Well, that, that helps. Yeah, that, that helps a lot. Lah. But anyways, so far reporting profit, very good. Uh, and if you notice that there is a line at their PNL, so there's actually a line called the other operating expenses and it's recorded uh, in a positive uh, value. Instead of negative, because when you talk about expenses, it's talk about uh, negative, right? However, this is actually because of their debt restructuring. Uh, they actually write back a lot of this provision and forgiveness of liability in that period amounting to 33.6 billion. So basically, their creditors actually forgive them to not, not need to pay back those loans. Uh. So that is why they kind of make a profit. So that's why, that's why the market has reacted so strongly. Yeah, but this is just on paper. Yeah. It's not really like true cash, you know? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's actually a big difference. And later I'll show you a little bit in the cash flow statement. Okay, so this is the uh, balance sheet. So if you notice, right, uh, there's actually a provision of termination. So basically they just terminated the one of the loans. Last time they actually owe about 25 billion. Now the 25 billion is all gone. <laughs> so- I, I, I'm not, sorry, I'm yeah. not sure if their numbers are right. Like. What, what happened to the share capital? Right, right. I think because typo, they, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a typo or because they dispose of a lot of these aircraft. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe it uh, could be because of share, uh, some of the uh, joint yeah. ventures. Like for example, they are India JV, they actually dispose of. Yeah, yeah so it could be. But they but, are uh, accumulative losses. Mm. Uh, it's still 600 billion. 600 million. 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 Yeah. And uh, I look at the earnings, I don't think you will. It's going to be pretty hard, man. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but there is actually some sign, a little bit sign of recovery. Right, like, right. like there is like more travel uh, revenue and everything, but I'll show you guys later. So this is the true earning of uh, AX. They didn't really earn about 32 billion. They actually only make about like uh, 93 million, which is still pretty okay. I mean, in cash flow, uh, compared to previously, I believe they're five in the years negative. To get, uh, five years, six years to get out of, you know, yeah, six years to get out of PN17. Yes, six exactly. Years. It's still a long more way for them to build, unless they raise funds. Uh. So that's another alternative way. Now, so if you look at these uh, other statistics, statistics, right? So you notice that they are uh, ASK, which is the average, uh, sorry, not ASK, R. PK, which is the revenue passenger uh, kilometer. Uh, that one has been improving, means how many That's people good, yeah. is sitting in the plane and then per revenue seat. Lah. So it's increased by 100%. Load factor also have been increasing. More and more people are sitting inside the plane. And then yeah, generally all of the statistics on traveling is doing pretty well. Lah. Yeah. So that's actually a good sign for AX that business is up and running better than previously when they are still in hibernation mode. Okay, so this is the final takeaway. So number one, it is that you need to know that the auditor actually got put a very big sign of a disclaimer of opinion. Uh, of course, because the share capital, the shareholder equity is now in the negative. They also have a, um, somewhat a huge pile of debt, even though they managed to reduce a huge amount, but it's still debt, like 600 million worth of it. So that is another risk that you need to know. And also another point is that they discontinue one of the uh, JV, which is their Indonesia Air Asia Extra. So uh, right now, I believe they're still holding their Thailand JV and Malaysia one. 
And then they also expect that there will be uh, 16 aircraft within its fleet by 2023. So I believe in 2020, 2021, I believe the number is only like four aircraft in their fleet. So right now they are expanding that. And then there's another question on merging with Capital A av Aviation Arm. Mm. Because Capital A, if you follow the news, right, they plan to divest this aviation arm to, uh, they just want to dispose of this asset to AAX and they want to just purely focus on digital business only. Yeah, so I'm not sure how AAX is actually going to buy their, uh, their aviation arm. It's, yeah, it's uh, a big question mark, uh, actually. Yeah, yeah. With all the cash flow, all the debt accumulated, I don't think they have the ability to actually acquire this capital aviation arm. But we shall see what they will do. Lah. I don't know whether they're going to be exchanging hands or not. But uh, generally, uh, so this company has went up like 200 over percent in a matter of like few weeks. So is this the comeback of A Asia? Uh, I am not too sure because everything so far is only shown on paper, not really like true money coming to business yep. and to service all of those debts. And then actually there's a lot of investors are actually very optimistic now. They even say that uh, the company can reach to four ringgit <laughs> which is like 2017, 2018. I mean, you say a lot of investors, you're talking about i3, right? I, yes, exactly. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, i3 is a bit like the Jim Cramer of Malaysia. So <laughs> if you don't get the reference, uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But but who knows, right? what if later we post this video, then suddenly it shoot out yeah, another like yeah, 100%. Correct, right. So yeah, that's it for Asia X. Anything you want to comment about that? Um, I think that if they do merge with Capital A, it makes them look better. Makes... Uh, sorry, the aviation arm. Mm. And obviously, it will eat into the profits of the short haul aviation arm, which is not good. Um, I'm not, yeah, like you said, I'm not quite sure how they're going to do it. But, mm. you know, the whole business model of airplanes is one of, it's one of the worst in the world. Because, yeah, because people want comfort, people want this, people want that in the plane. And planes are expensive, which means the depreciation of the planes or the leasing of the planes are going to be expensive. Mm. Uh, you 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 want to say like so and so plane has comfortable seats. Another competitor will come up with comfortable seats. Or so mm. uh, it, it's a very price. Um, it's a very price war kind of industry. Right, but Warren Buffett says that it is an industry where your smallest, your dumbest competitor sets the price, and the only mode that Asia had, in my view, is the fact that they that they have a lot more planes, yeah, and they have a lot more landing rights, and I'm talking about Air Asia, the short haul one. Mm. That is their mode, right? That's why they are valuable they can go to places that other people don't cannot go to and it, it will probably take forever uh, for other competitor planes to get as many planes as Asia. But the same dynamics cannot be found in Asia X because now they're traveling to the world and the world is very big and there are a lot of big players and something unique about the world is that, you know, a lot of countries, even though airlines are loss making generally mm. uh, people still want a national airline for whatever reason so that's why Warren Buffett I believe Warren Buffett or can't remember who said it, says that do you want to know how to become a millionaire you start off as a billionaire and you buy an airplane company <laughs> So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's a pretty tough, interesting stuff. Right. So uh before you guys go, uh this is the Fire Pro stock performance for February 2023. Uh I believe the March one you see the gains will be shrinking a little bit yes, because yes. the market has not been doing quite well. But overall, I believe most of our stocks are on the green. Yeah. Uh yeah. I'm not sure whether maybe there's like one or two stocks will be in the red. Lah. And, and uh, of course, if you want to yeah. figure out um if you just want to give you a test, right? Yeah. You want to see how, how we do things. Uh, head over to our free sample section, just download. 
comment yeah, section description. Exactly. Oh, and before I forgot to mention uh, the Telegram group over here. Yeah, if just now I show you guys the results of the talk glove that we share to our members, right? That, those is actually go under the Telegram yeah. stock performance. So if you want more of those short-term catalysts, you can actually access that. And yeah, the free links are all in the description and yeah. comments below. And I believe that is all for today's video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the three stock series that we have been doing every single month. Uh, please continue to show your support and make sure to like and don't subscribe ask for, for four. more. Yeah, don't, yeah, ask, don't for ask for four. four. Three is the max. Many, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, make sure to check out all of our other videos and follow us on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, all of those good stuff. The links are in the description below and we'll see you in the next time. Bye-bye.